In Team Fortress 2, the Pyro is usually considered to be slow and immobile, and many players see him as just a WM1 bot. However, there's lots of ways to express your skill as Pyro, and one of the most fun ways is detonator jumping and flanking using the detonator, which is, in my opinion, one of the most fun weapons in TF2, and certainly my favourite weapon for the Pyro. In this TF2 Pyro guide, let's learn all about how, where, when and why you should start using the detonator, how you can use it to its fullest potential, and how the detonator can improve your TF2 play and be super fun to use. I'm also going to show you a really high quality training map that you can use to practice your detonator jumps specifically. Before that though, let's take a quick look at the stats of Pyro's detonator and what the detonator can do for you. Now although this video guide is mainly going to focus on detonator jumping, it's still very useful to check out the stats of the detonator and some different ways that Pyros can use it throughout a game. To start with, the detonator has a 25% damage penalty compared to the normal flare gun, dealing only 23 damage compared to the flare gun's 30 damage, although the detonator does apply the standard 4 damage per tick afterburn. The detonator only mini crits burning targets for 30 damage instead of critting enemies for 90 damage like the flare gun. So if it does less damage than the flare gun, and the weapon from hell the scorch shot, why should you use a detonator as a pyro? Well, it's because the detonator has a unique and interesting stat, 50% damage to self. This lets us jump around the map as pyro, which is super fun and opens up a lot of playstyles and tactics for us to use. However, this self damage stat means that a detonator jump will usually cause around 40 damage to yourself, up to a maximum of 44, so make sure you have enough health to survive the detonation. We can use the right mouse button to detonate our projectile manually, causing damage to nearby enemies and lighting them on fire. This is really useful for damaging big groups of enemies as Pyro, on the payload for example, and we can also use the self-detonation to hit enemies that are around walls, or even behind cover as you can see. We can even destroy sticky traps with the detonation, which can be really helpful when pushing an area as an attacker or trying to get out of spawn. Using the detonator to harass enemies at long range is another really interesting tactic because pyros aren't really known for their long range ability, so being able to deal with enemies at medium to long range is very very important. The detonator gives us a unique tool to harass snipers, medics, engineer nests and even groups of enemies on the payload. If you get good with this weapon then it's more consistent and forgiving to use than the flare gun at longer range, and it can be really useful and rewarding to constantly harass a target and even kill them from across the map as a pyro. But finally, let's talk about how to master the really unique and the most fun part of this weapon, which is detonator jumping as a pyro. Now, pyro isn't really known for his mobility skills, so mastering the detonator and using it to flank or jump towards enemies can completely catch enemies off guard. There's a couple of different types of detonator jumps, and I'm going to focus on the most practical ones in this video. We'll start with the easiest, which is a basic vertical detonator jump. This type of detonator jump focuses on verticality, we use this type of detonator jump to efficiently reach high areas and platforms that are above you. Now I thought it would be helpful to show my keyboard and mouse inputs as I do some of these jumps, so it's easier for newer players or beginners to understand. To perform a vertical detonator jump, aim downwards, then shoot, jump and crouch at the same time. Focus on jumping, crouching and shooting at the same time. If you're having trouble, just focus on crouch jumping at first, then once you've got that down, try the detonator jump again after you get used to crouch jumping correctly. Now the other common detonator jump that you're going to be using is a self-detonation jump, or self-det. This kind of detonator jump gives us a lot more speed and a lot more range, letting us reach areas that we ordinarily would never be able to get to with normal pyro loadout. To perform a self-det jump, look behind you like a normal rocket jumper soldier for example, hold your right mouse button, and then repeat the instructions from the last section. Make sure to crouch, jump and shoot at the same time whilst holding your right mouse button. This self-det jump Let's just perform crazy mobility feats as Pyro, and it's by far the most practical and useful mobility tool that we Pyros have at our disposal. I've included a few example jumps on some popular maps, on screen as you can see, and you can imagine how useful these jumps are in an actual game. These flank groups completely take enemies by surprise, and the speed and horizontal range of the self dead jumps lets you close the distance on enemies very very quickly. You can even develop your own flank routes and use weapons that complement the flank playstyle, like the back burner, to decimate enemies. If you want to be really mean, then you can combine the self dead jump with the phlogistonator to flank enemies, surprise enemies with crits, and use your unexpected mobility to catch enemies who think they're safe. Now the basic vertical detonator jump usually takes around 36 health to perform, whereas a self dead jump takes around 41 health to perform, so make sure you have enough health to survive the blast. 
Now, there are more advanced detonator jumps, such as delaying the detonation slightly, double jumping with a detonator, perfecting the crouch jump time with a maximum height, strafing right while detonator jumping to get slightly more height, and if you're interested in these kind of advanced jumps, then I've included links in the description for more information. However, in an actual, you know, proper game, and as a practical tool for pyro players, you'll really only ever need these two example jumps, which is the basic vertical detonator jump and the horizontal self debt jump. These two detonator jumping styles are pretty easy to learn and will let you reach almost every high area on any TF2 map and pull off some incredibly fast and long jumps that enemies would never ever expect. Now if you're enjoying the video, you learned something new so far or just want to support my channel, then please remember to like, subscribe and get involved in the comment section down below if you have any feedback or questions. The good news about detonator jumping as a pyro is it's not really that niche. There's a lot of situations where a well-timed or well-executed detonator jump can result in a lot of kills, an amazing flank, or a game-winning play. A major benefit of the detonator is how you can use it to roll out as pyro, just like a soldier or a demo man would. As long as you have a medic or there's no enemies on your route, you can self-debt jump from spawn to the front line extremely quickly, almost matching the speed of a scout in some cases. Just remember that each detonator jump costs around 41 health, so make sure you don't get caught out on the way by an enemy on the way to the rest of your team. Apart from that, I'd recommend using it to flank enemies wherever possible, as you'll completely surprise them and get easy and quick kills. It's very helpful in attack, as you can flank defenders and quickly get into unexpected areas and positions, and it is extremely helpful on defense, because you can harass enemies from long range, and at some point, self debt jump onto them with a lot of speed and range, and then begin flaming. You can also combo your detonator jumps with air blasts and melee attacks to yeet enemies off cliffs, abduct enemies and push them into your team, or channel you in a sketchbook and get some sick flying melee kills. Just be careful when jumping into unknown areas, as there might be an enemy or a sentry gun that can completely blast you across the map. If you do a self debt jump and continue holding crouch while in the air, you're going to take more knockback from enemy damage, but you can reach slightly higher areas. If you're just jumping around and flanking, then it's fine to hold crouch. But if you jump into an enemy scout, for example, while holding crouch in the midair, and the scout shoots you, you can lose a lot of momentum. So if you're jumping into groups of enemies, or scouts for example, I recommend crouch jumping to perform the detonator jump, and then stop holding crouch during the air travel time, so you don't get knocked back as much by damage. I promised I'll show you an amazing detonator jump training map, and Jump Pyrokinesis by Red Dagger is exactly that. Not only does the map look amazing, but it's great for practicing different detonator jumps as Pyro. Download the map on the Steam Workshop using the link in my description, and enter the following command into your console to enter the map. Now there's five different courses which increase in difficulty as you go along. The first course, A, is perfect for beginners and it includes help signs which offer really useful information and tips if you need them. Now the second course, B, includes some trickier horizontal jumps, self debt jumps and air strafing. The third course, C, includes some tricky vertical jumps which require timing and precision to pull off consistently. Beginners should focus on mastering course A to the point where you can complete without any issues. Then focus on completing course B, which has some of the more realistic and practical jumps in my opinion. Finally, course C includes a long range self debt jump, a high vertical jump and a few combinations of the two styles. This means that if you can master course C, you'll have all the tools you need to use detonator jumps in a practical way in actual games. Now advanced players or people who just enjoy jump maps can challenge themselves in courses B and E which feature uniquely difficult detonator jump challenges, and if you want more information, then you can check out Valvi's video in the description for more advanced detonator jumping techniques and a full playthrough of the map. However, if you're just interested in actual TF2 gameplay, then completing courses A, B and C will be way more than enough. So everyone, if you want to mess around with a pyro weapon that's unique, fun and rewarding to use, then try out the detonator in your next TF2 game and prove that Pyro is way more than just W plus M1. Thanks for watching and take care.